Hello, YouTube. What's going on? I'm Carrie Sandra of Alpen Glow Industries. It is Wednesday. It is another solder sesh. Woo, woo, woo. Today we have David Ray of Cyber City Circuits here with us. And we're going to be putting together uh, the, the last, sit a little sad face, yeah. the last of their <laughs> soldering subscription kits, which is like a build your own Arduino that's about the size of a business card. So that's kind of kind of neat we got all sorts of like new kind of setup stuff going on this week that we're trying out so we're gonna see how it goes it's the first time that uh we're feeding three video streams into the computer so we'll see how it likes that <laughs> and uh we have like a different a slightly different microscope setup that's this one um, so yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna check it out. This is, uh, it might be a little better for the through hole soldering because it's, um, it's a little bit, uh, out of my way basically. <laughs> and the regular microscope for through hole soldering is, um, it can be challenging because it actually, the, the circuit board is up a little high and it's hard to adjust our microscope as high as it needs to be in order to be, you know, at the right focal distance and stuff. So anyway, a whole bunch of stuff that you probably don't care about, but you know, if you're also thinking about doing live stream stuff or showing really small things on video, it can be helpful to know, you know? So yeah, this is uh this is right here. Yeah, the um, small one here, the USB micro, it's a really cheap, like $40 microscope cam by Pluggable. And um, it looks pretty good. <laughs> hello, Bob. And hello, Jason. How's it going? Just talking about like setup changes here and stuff. So, woo. All right. Well, should maybe hello, Signal Ditch. You are new. Welcome. Cool. Hey, Signal Ditch. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to get started soldering. True to form, I have not read any instructions. <laughs> oh, and this week, I finally have beer again. Yay, beer. So it's all going to be swimmingly, go swimmingly and be smooth. Um, I'm going to start soldering, but I would love to chat with you, David, about... Sure the whole subscription club and like how it got started. And if you don't mind sharing with us, like some of the challenges of it, you know, I, I like to do small business talk at, at times and let people know like some of the, some of the behind the scenes struggles, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you don't, if you don't mind sharing, sharing. Yeah, some of sure. I'll share whatever. Yeah. Uh, Cause, cause it's important that like, if, if someone can learn from my lessons, they don't have to, yeah. they don't have to make the same mistakes. They could choose to make the same mistakes, but they don't have to, <laughs> um, but you know, I can at least give them the opportunity to, to succeed where I didn't. Um, so, uh, I ca in, in late 2019, I cashed in my retirement account and I started a business. And <laughs> I bought a business partner. I bought a pick and place machine. And, and uh, then we got a pandemic three months later. So yep. um, Chris and I uh, decided at that point, because we didn't know what to do, uh, we were making face shields. We started doing face shields uh, for local hospitals um, for mm -hmm. pandemic. And um, uh we did, we had this, we got this plastic from Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola literally gave us, we had to pay for the shipping, but mm -hmm. they literally gave us a ton of plastic, like bottle plastic. Hmm. Uh, it's on a, it came on a spool. It was like 2,200 pounds of plastic. And uh, we got it all laser cut and we made a bunch of face shields and we were sitting there. So we had a lot of time just sitting there making face shields, just looking at each other. <laughs> and so we ideas. And uh, Chris, so... If you can get a, a subscription product off the ground and make it really successful, it can it can take off. You know, mm -hmm. like you, a successful subscription product will pay all your bills. Um, well, it's nice because you know you right. have some prediction, right, of what right. kind of money is coming in every month, and so you know it makes cash flow and finances a lot a little bit easier, a lot smoother, <laughs> right. 
Uh, yeah. So we thought, hey, we give it a try with the subscription box. So we spun up the store so that we could do the subscription box. Mm -hmm. And then we also had the other stuff. We we came out with the Cyber Digit, which is a really cool, like, NeoPixel kind of seven-segment display. Uh, we came up with a lot of products. And, um, and we're going to do subscription boxes. So uh, the first few are easy. Everyone has an idea for a decent soldering kit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, and you, were, you started off with them at once a month. Yeah. Which is, once a month. Which is quite... A lot. <laughs> imagine, imagine walking into a month and having a deadline that's like 28 days away that you have to <laughs> ship a product and you don't even know what the product is yet. <laughs> and you have 28 days to ship it. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, with China and you got to we'll ship all the stuff from overseas, you got to get the boards made. And, and uh, yeah, I did. We did it monthly for like a year. And, yeah. Um and it was rough. Um and uh but man, you talk about getting really quick with development time. Uh, <laughs> I got to where I guess like the tic tac let me let me grab one real quick. Hold on. Yeah. The other thing that I, I feel like is that it's um is that it's super easy to have have it sort of planned in your head. It's easy to have the best intentions at the beginning. And you're like, oh, I know. I'm going to spend one month just like prepping all of these kits and doing all this work ahead of time. And then we'll just slow roll it month by month. Right. And then right. what happens? Well, like life happens and other business stuff happens. And it turns out that like you need to, to like, you get the first thing done, then you need to take a break because you have a whole bunch of other stuff yes. that needs immediate yes. attention. Yes. And then you you just you start getting in this cycle of always lagging, like you're just like a little bit later than you want to be, and then it gets to be super stressful. And it compounds. So yes. like uh you know, that's another thing. If you think something's gonna take you a couple days, it's really gonna take you six days. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever you think it's going to take, it's going to take three times longer yeah, without exception. And like, <laughs> um, but like, here's one of the kits we did. So like I got to wear all these LEDs. Look at all those. It's a tic-tac-toe oh, game. Oh, dang. That's all a that really routing, big board. Yeah. Those are all five it, millimeters. Yeah. It's a hundred by a hundred. Mm -hmm. And I did this schematic and design in like one Saturday. Dang. And uh, so you get really, really good and really, really quick with it. And you get very proficient in KeyCAD, but eventually you just run out of ideas. Like, here's another one. Yeah. Uh, this is one y'all did. But you just. Oh, that's the sequencer one? Yeah. Yeah. I really like that one. That was a and super the, fun kit. The, uh... Oh, and then another thing. So here's one of the kits we did. It was the theremin kit in which y'all did this yes. one too. Okay. That one is still our absolute favorite, yes. by the way. That one has oh. so much joy. So when you when you have a development time that's like 28 days to ship, <laughs> you don't have any room yeah. for error. Like if no. you if you if you make a mistake, yeah, like there's no fixing it. And and yeah. so on this example, I ordered 150 of these boards for the kits. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the ultrasonic sensor, I had ground and VCC switched. Oh no. Which uh, meant that when my ultrasonic sensor is plugged in, it burned it it uh, melted my three twenty eight on my nano. Oh, so, uh, and, but you don't know that at first. Like you're sitting right. there with the computer and you just start smelling something. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, um, I tell you, so uh, in two thousand nineteen. Uh, I started the company in, in late 2018. I was doing soldering kits and I was trying to teach. And so like a couple of these soldering kits are just like, this is one that we released under the program, but this was, it's a uh, keyboard. It's a computer keyboard. Oh, cool. And, uh, but this is something that I learned when I was teaching myself KeyCAD. This was just like a demo project. So it was the business card. Um, I learned, so the business card is the culmination of me watching a lot of bald engineer. You know, James Lewis, bald engineer. 
by any chance? No, the handle sounds a little bit familiar, but I don't, I'm not familiar. I'm not. No, he right. used to have a YouTube series where he like, he was sit, I don't know. He, he was just really good at teaching. So he, he made a Arduino in the shape of a pyramid and he called it the pyramid Duino. And he just nice. went through the entire process step by step over like four hours on how he did it. Uh, and he had, so like, this was my version of that. Yeah. Nice. Um, so nice. I really, I really like this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested in possibly doing a spinoff of this style okay. of it. Um, I like the idea of a solder it yourself Arduino, right? Because right. it's like, kind of it's a couple projects in one it's you know it's like a, a gateway project and then you also get you know if you don't already know how to program and aren't already familiar with arduinos then you like you get to solder it up and then you get to do something with the arduino um like i myself am always frustrated about uh like i love all of the digital io I hate that there are only a couple of power and ground pins. <laughs> right. So I'm kind of thinking of doing something similar. That's a solder yourself kit, but actually like putting sort of servo style, I guess, um, headers, not necessarily headers, but um, yeah, I guess headers like servo style headers, just so you, that you have like the row and you have, you know, the IO that's down the outside. So you could still make it in a shield, um, mm -hmm. in a shield format. So you would have the IO down the outside and then you would have five volts in the middle or VCC in the middle, whatever. And then and ground, uh, on, the ground on the one side. Yeah. So that you can actually freaking wire it to all of the things that need wiring, at least which, you know, my projects tend to need like a fair bit of wiring every, everywhere. So yeah. So that's another that so, we have. So you're a getting, by the way, you're getting mad props in the comments. So you can you can see the public comments too if you click uh, comments. There's like private chat and there's comments on oh, the okay. side. Oh yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen that at all. Hold on one second. Hey everybody. Yeah, I always forget to mention it. <laughs> oh, there you People go. Are like, are you seeing the comments. So yeah, so you're getting mad props for doing like the subscription thing for a year. <laughs> I used to work with Tom, so he he knows exactly what's going on. He's an EE. Um, and yeah. It was something that we started to try to get some revenue going. And then we yeah. just kind of like it it went it went a lot it went on longer than it probably should have. But we really I, I really wanted it to continue. But I know, like I was to... like I can I can do a new soldering kit in, you know in three months because we went to quarterly and I was like I could do that once a quarter I can do that that's easy <laughs> and um, and it was still really hard <laughs> you, know, tell you, you know believe it or not uh, the hardest part is really just coming up with the idea like there's only so much you can do with through whole components at this point like and we started well... using a lot of Arduino nanos but yeah. like and you could do a lot with those and those are fun. Yeah, but you only have some. You only have so many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, it. I think it's hard. It's difficult to make ideas like on a schedule, right? Right. Like for right. me, ideas come in the shower usually. <laughs> like frankly, it's like when I'm not thinking about work, right? When my brain is just zoning out, it's and like no pen and paper. Oh. Yep, and and right, and you have no pen and paper. Yep. Exactly. Right. I have many times thought about putting like a whiteboard right outside of my shower. <laughs> so I can just like grab a pen and scribble on it. Oh my God. Actually, well, I want to do a like series right? just shower thoughts. <laughs> your phone's like one of those fancy new waterproof ones, right? What's that? Oh, your the phone, phone? my phone. <laughs> yeah, just take it in my the shower. Is, my phone is old. I actually need a new uh... phone. Um, but yeah, sorry. So, so sorry. Didn't mean to bust up your trade of thought. I just sort of oh, yeah. look at the look at the comments. Yeah. So the triple triple pins for that. Oh, Bob says that in his first full time job, he he learned to double estimates and then bump up the scale. One day effort right. equals two weeks delivery. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Tom says, like, he's such a scaredy cat. He wouldn't advertise monthly kits unless he, unless he had six done and tested. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just oh, yeah, no. We, we, I'll tell you. Definitely we not did, happening. It ain't we ended up doing, like, 15 thought. kits. We did, like, 15 kits. And only one of them had a problem in production. And, oh. and that was this one. And we were able to fix it. You know, I just order 150 more boards, right? Boards, yeah. So, like, um, and we're only we're only like a week late on schedule on that one, which I'm pretty happy about. But like, yeah, uh, you'd think you'd have a lot more failure in 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 a 28 day turnaround, but you don't. So, yeah. Um, yep. So, so, uh, so it was just, it was like constantly sprinting in order to keep it up. And it didn't and even really work full time. I have a full time job doing this stuff too. Like, <laughs> like it just, it's just, I, I was doing it on Saturdays, but then it got yeah. to the point where they had to be packed. And so we have Angel and Tim and Hannah and Linda and they're packing kits. But then when they're packing kits for like two days, three days, they're not doing other work. Yep. And so, it just it just gets and it doesn't make money. If if, if anybody wants to go into business and of uh, uh, strictly selling soldering kits and think that they're going to pay their bills doing that, please, I'm telling you, it doesn't. Yeah, make I money. mean, <laughs> soldering kits is something that is like like a subscription based thing is something right. that is like a maybe eventually. Right. But I wouldn't even do it unless it was like, I wouldn't do it monthly. I would do it quarterly and I would definitely have more people involved in the business than I do now, because I know I wouldn't have, I know I would have been in the same situation. I would always be late. Right. So I have just learned about shower crayons Jason says his wife his wife keeps bath crayons in the shower so that they can write down their shower thoughts. And this is brilliant. I guess I mean are, there's nothing special about them, right? It's just I mean, well, I mean they're baths. oil based, right? So like they... they don't come off in water. You probably have to use soap to get them off the wall. That kind of sounds brilliant. Unfortunately, my shower is like a tan. It's sort of like a medium brown stone. So Get I need black crayons. Black crayons, right. Oh, I wonder, you know those oil, like, pencils? That, um, pens. Yeah. Yeah. Those things. I bet you those would work. With, where they have the little string that pulls off, the marking pens or whatever, yeah. 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 For some reason, I have, like, I associate those with grade school, and I have no idea what we used them for in grade school, but, like, we used them for something. Hmm. We used like them in the Marine Corps like for it. something, but I can't remember what. I remember, <laughs> you know, I remember because they get on your hands and they don't oh, come white off. Crayons, yeah. White crayons would be good, good too. Yeah. The, my shower, though, white crayons probably wouldn't work because it's like too, it's like mottled color. So I think that they would sort of blend into, but black would work. Black would definitely work. Yeah. The grease pencils. That's what they're called. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Those. Those. I could just like not like clean them off either. So at the end of a year, my shower would just like be graffitied with all of my random thoughts. And like people who came into my house would think I was completely nuts. I think that is a great, great plan. <laughs> Google bath crayons for kids. Okay. I will, I will Google that, that, that sounds like exactly the product I need. <laughs> We <laughs> also just get a voice recorder. They make yeah, them. but then that needs to work in the shower, and then yeah. you don't get the satisfaction of writing it. Well, you're there oh. to shower, not to write. <laughs> but we're talking about recording all of these good thoughts that happen when you're in the shower. <laughs> I hey, can't Jason. be the only one. I can't be the only one that has great ideas in the shower. <laughs> Hey Bob. Hey Jason. Uh, hey Tom. I don't think I I have no idea who Tom is, do I? Tom Tom is a friend of mine who I know in real life who I used to work with. And signal he digital. He taught me you know a lot about digital? cool analog electronics and shit. Oh, I love analog electronics. Yeah. Nuttier than you are now. Nuttier than you. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> yup. <laughs> Bob's got my number. <laughs> He's been hanging around here long enough to call it. Bob uh, was a subscriber. Uh, he was one of our earliest subscribers. I want to say he was easily in the top first 20 or 25. Nice. Um, what do you think? What was your favorite kit, Bob? Yeah, we want to know. Okay, so is there a right or is there a correct color of LED to put for power and for blinky? No, but I think you got it right. You know, that's exactly yeah. how I do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do red for power and blue for blinky. Cool. You like how I do the LED footprint with the lines to make sure you know which line supposed to go where or how the longer lead goes this way and the shorter lead goes this way. Ooh, you know what? I I matched I matched the flat the line the flat that's on the um let me get this yeah there's like four different identifiers on that football. right <laughs> i know i do like how there are how there are options so i matched just the silk screen the flat in the mm -hmm. silk screen here to the flat on the led lens um I can never keep in my head if the long one is positive or negative. I'm pretty sure it's positive. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, so, sure it's well, the it's the anode, it, it, but it, it's positive. Yeah. So when I'm in when I'm in soldering classes because I teach soldering too locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we did at B sides Augusta. I taught 90 people how to solder in one day. Dang, that's um, a lot. It is a lot. Oh my god, I was so tired. I was <laughs> but, but like, um, I do the thing. You know, there, it's 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 a spiel where you're talking about LEDs. I'm like the the long pin goes through the circle hole. The long pin goes Bueller, Bueller, right? And uh, so it's just it's just in my head now. I just it's just a it's part of a script in my head. The long <laughs> pin goes through the circle hole. Nice, nice. Well, so. but then you also have to um, depend on uh, yourself for having done the pattern right because maybe not everyone will will make the circle and the square pattern. even in class they still get it wrong yeah i'll be in a class and i'll say that over and over and over i'll probably say it like 10 times back to back to back because you, you i don't want you to get it wrong because i i'm the one that has to fix it I'm like if you're not <laughs> reading the class with something that doesn't work it will work but now i have to rework your board <laughs> which is bad it's not fun um and, boy uh, you're nice reworking boards for other people I, I, every cool single person left I, i've i don't think i've had a person leave one of my classes without a working with a bad board that's cool and that's and i've cool. never had anybody get hurt <laughs> not once which i'm really proud of um tom's pulling my leg about tantalum capacitors in the chat just want you to want you to well, see you, that yeah. <laughs> I know. I um although now I'm like, did I really get that red LED right? I think so. It's hard to tell once they're in which one was the flat one, but so we Bob, did have a tantalum capacitor explode on us recently. It was part really? of the uh, Nixie clock kit. And I think it was just a bad cap because it we subsequent video footage proved that I put it in in the correct orientation. So it was a little surprising. It was it was good. It was good pop. <laughs> Robin jumped. Yeah. She might be scarred now yeah. with with the whole capacitor thing. <laughs> okay. So, so, Bob, so but the good part, the good part about the whole like deciding not to do the soldering kit anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. part of the reason that you were having so much trouble keeping up with it is also because you were busy with other stuff right yeah because so, the business we started it when we didn't have any business when we just started <laughs> out and then we finally got business where it became successful at what we wanted to do and there was just no more room for it unfortunately i really wanted so, to keep it going so tell tell us for people who might not know mm. what that other side of the business is oh my god i'm the largest electronics manufacturer in augusta we uh, <laughs> we, we got three big in place machines. We got a reflow oven. We got this big fancy stencil printing machine that's had to meet a crane twice just to get into our building. Um, <laughs> and uh, we do a lot of design work. We also do a lot of fabrication and box builds. Um, 
for example, right now we have a whole bunch of uh, we got like 50 waterproof enclosures that we're building these uh, things into that go places. And so, uh, <laughs> so we're doing that and we're going to be QC in them all, putting batteries in them, doing like a, a 72 hour burn in over a weekend and all that. So we offer all of these services and we're really good at it for the most part. And um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're new. Like I said, we started in uh, we really got going in 2020 and uh, and we, we've been just catching. We just we're on fire. Like we're just we're doing really, really, really good. And I'm I'm happy that for people like Bob and Jason and Carrie that really helped us along this journey. Thank you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. It's been it's been awesome getting to know you through Twitter and the internet and meetups and stuff like that. It's, it's what it's all about. What is my main business that needs an SMD line? Well, I make <laughs> I, I do PCB assembly, Tom. I can do it for yeah. you too. <laughs> and uh, and um. Uh, we do a lot of PCB work for Jason. We've done work for Carrie. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got, oh, we're looking to get a new line. Well, new to me, it's used, but um, a line, a man core line, uh, hopefully by the end of this quarter. What is that? Is that like a pick in place and reflow or is that inspection oh, or fancy stuff, Carrie? It's the yeah, real tell, fancy tell stuff. Me. Tell me, tell me I want to hear about fancy machines. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the uh we're gonna take this old garbage stuff we got, go put it in the dumpster and put it <laughs> in all the new stuff. Um, well wait, before you put it in the dumpster, give no, a girl a ring. We'll end up we'll end up taking those machines and dedicating dedicating them to customers. Um but uh maybe i get maybe some at some point i give a little tour uh what is the minimum on number of pcb assemblies we don't have a minimum um but we do charge more for shorter runs uh yeah. we consider those prototyping uh usually anything less than 25 pieces uh it's going to be hand place and uh which we're pretty good at hand placing too we have like people that do that um mm -hmm. But it also depends on parts and stuff. Like, um, we we try to be very competitively priced, uh, especially uh, even when it comes to prototyping. Prototyping is going to be expensive, yep. so just know that anywhere you go, it's expensive. It takes time, and um, but like you know, runs like we do five hundred, we do a thousand. Uh, I don't think we've had a customer that add more than a thousand. But I think we could probably do like twenty five hundred to five thousand pretty comfortably. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, we and do you can also do one if somebody wanted you to do one. <laughs> yeah, we, I'll do one. Yeah, it would be a and, lot of money, uh, but it would, yeah. Yeah, right. It'd just be you're right, and even then, like a lot of times with prototyping, even though it costs a lot, it's still like the time the money time thing isn't quite there. The idea is that, you know, if we help you with a prototype and when you go to production, we get the production work too. Even, but yep. if we don't, that's okay. We get it. But like, um, I don't know. We, we, we do pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we, you also... we, miss, we missed one. And uh, you see that? What? You missed one. That what? Bottom oh, one right I didn't there? reflow the bottom. You're right. Yeah. That was my, that was my crappy. Thank you. Keeping me honest here. That was and, my uh, crappy original solder joint to just tack it down. But Always got to go back and reflow that one. Uh, but it's a blast, uh, you know. It is it, it live do. I I own I own an electronics factory. How cool is that? Yay. Isn't How that cool so cool? That? Right. So, so it's super uh, cool. Uh, if my twelve year old self could see me now. <laughs> um, I want, I've been one man. I tell you, this is like the realization of childhood dreams. And um, I remember when I first started learning electronics. One second, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. I will. Uh, I will take over here by showing when... you a bit more of what's going on. So I pretty much only have two more things to solder, which is this. Um, this. Okay. Uh, socket thank you very much which of yes, course uh we make sure that the socket notch right there 
is yep. pointed towards the notch on the silk screen because ICs are directional and it's good to have them all lined up. And then the only other thing I have to solder is the uh, big old header for all of the all of the different signals and inputs and outputs. You so, like yeah. how you like how like the name at Mega three twenty eight P fits right underneath the socket. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. Like that, so, wow. <laughs> um. So when I was, uh, when I was twelve years old, I stole yes. a book. Ooh. From the Lexington County Public Library. Oh my! Wait, you weren't charged a million dollars in late fees? I don't think they'd ever knew how to find me. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. it was this like book. It. This is the book that I stole when I was a kid. A giant is, is that still the of, same one? That's the same book. Giant same handbook book. of two hundred and twenty-two weekend electronics projects. And <laughs> I never, uh, as a kid, I never built any of these but i read this book over and over and over and i wanted so hard to understand what the hell this meant you know what i mean like like please explain this to me and um and i found some more books i didn't steal those uh um <laughs> the uh <clears throat> um so I, so I got some other books and I started learning and I started fooling around with it. And uh, I went to the Marine Corps and I did radio repair for the Marines and they trained me some. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and and now here I am. Cool. So let me, when I learn enough KeyCAD to design some board, someday, Bob, right? I have in mind six to 24 months. Then I, I'll, so what, six to 24 months to get good enough to design a board bob uh, it's not going to take you what that kind long of lag is there this the, the, what kind of lag is this like 10 seconds oh from what oh on youtube yeah. versus us yeah. yeah yeah there's like a five to ten second lab lag between what you and i see and what oh. youtube sees yeah so it's um fun. but yeah no like this is this is like childhood dream kind of stuff so it and it's so cool um, <laughs> and I'm sure Carrie's in the same boat, right? Yeah, I'm. I um, I am trying to also live my best 12 year old life. <laughs> oh. Although, actually, like, so when I was 12, I like didn't know anything about electronics. So I don't even know what I wanted to do when I was 12. I would have been in seventh grade. I think paleontologist was still what I wanted to be at that point in time, maybe. What year was this? It was either that or astronaut. I'm not sure which. What I'm year was sure it? Which. Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, I was 12 in 1989. So, did you, yep. did you ever Did you ever own a pair of parachute pants? Yeah, <laughs> I did not. However, some mm -hmm. of my friends did, and they mm. looked super fly in them because they, they had the hammer moves too. Yeah, for sure, did. for sure. No, I was so I I grew up in the Caribbean, but I oh, no, what's up? Yeah, where, uh, where at in the Caribbean? I didn't know that. Where are you? Um, where are you from? <laughs> where, where where did you come from? Right. <laughs> uh, so I grew up on the island of St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. And I went to school in St. Thomas for most of my life from when I was seven on through high school. I was going to taking a boat to a different island every day and, and back for school. And, um, you know, my so I lived with my mom in the Caribbean and my dad was um, living in New Jersey. And so I would see him for summers. He was the uh, engineer electronics person, although when I was when I was little, he wasn't working in electronics. He was um, like working at a family restaurant business. But he actually but, he, you know, he had a big love for it. And he also um, worked on the Apollo program. So, you know, he was always always into space stuff. And so, um, and he was like really into computers, even, you know, before PCs were a thing that everybody had. And so I had like learned about computers early from him. I had some electronic toys early 
Um, but, you know, I also got like a lot from my mom and, you know, I've always like loved reading and literature and writing and things like that. So, um, so I kind of got, got different stuff from each of them, but there wasn't a lot of opportun opportunity to tinker with electronics and I like imagine. we didn't have an, uh, an electronics lab at all. In yeah. So it wasn't actually until... Well, we didn't even have an electronics lab in college. I hated electronics in college because the intro class was terrible. Um, and it wasn't until my first job after college that I started getting into electronics. Because suddenly there were like cool projects that we were trying to build, you know? We were trying to build this like small little six inch airplane in pre 2000. So that was a really hard task at that point in time. <laughs> Not a hard task today, but you know, Back in the last century, it was a tough, tough thing. Electronics were bigger and more power hungry. So, so yeah. So I've I have come by a level of electronics from uh, doing it for jobs and working with them, and you know, just learning for the last twenty five years. Yep. So yeah, but that means that I have a lot of making up for lost time when I was a kid. So now we're all about all of the toys and the lights and the blinkies and the <laughs> and the everything right. here. <laughs> and you know, the baby Yodas and you know, the unicorn plushies. The space pandas. Space stuff, yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything just bring it. All the all the fun stuff. We want it. <laughs> so, so do you have your amateur radio license and why not <laughs> i do not this has been this has been a topic um of conversation with a few different people uh basically i just i just haven't really made the time to do it um but like i do know several people who are into ham radio um and actually my friend Brittany is also um she also she has a, a license and um she's been bugging me to do it so that we can like take over local ham radio airwaves with feminist agendas and piss people off <laughs> oh my god it's so you sure you're not from augusta everybody <laughs> everybody man everybody <laughs> in ham radio around here is just so easy to piss off <laughs> I mean, I've, I've heard, I've heard there, it's a little bit of maybe an old timery, not they're well experienced. True. The, the the politically correct way is seasoned. <laughs> seasoned. Nice. They're well seasoned. They're well um, seasoned. But the, uh, uh, but yeah, and then like you know when you put up a repeater, it, it's public use. It doesn't yeah. matter that it's your repeater; it's public use. But yes. like some of these people are like, "Well, that's my repeater. I don't. Want, I, I want to play on it. I don't want you playing on it." Well, okay, then, I'll use someone else's repeater. That's fine. I don't want to play with yours if you don't want me to. But like, you don't have to be a prick about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, there's, if, there's I five. mean, I'll use another one. <laughs> if you don't want somebody like using your bandwidth, like buy yourself your own private band. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, like air, airwaves are public and especially hey. ham, ham waves are public for a reason. Oh, funny. And yes, you do not need so to know Morse code anymore. I've heard I've heard about that. Which I, right. I'm a little sad about, but that's okay. So it's... another thing is I tell you, <laughs> if if you want to use radio for commercial use. It needs to be licensed, not a ham license, yeah. not an amateur radio license, a yeah. commercial license. OK, this is for everybody listening. Yep. And if you use radio for commercial purposes without a license, every single ham radio operator in your within 60 miles of where you are will be up your butt. They will <laughs> get their spectrum analyzer out. They'll get their little Yagi antenna. They will find you. They'll, they'll hunt you down. Do. They're all retired. They have nothing better to do. They wait for this. They've trained for this. And so, so just 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 be aware. And this is what I tell people. Like so I'll have people come to me one wanted to build a product that's around RF. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly in a uh 
it's either in a ham band or it's in a, a licensed band. And I tell them, it's like, look, this isn't a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then I tell them the story. I don't know if anybody's gotten in trouble yet or not, but. Yeah, it's, there's a lot that people don't know about um, like electronics and regulations when they are not, when they haven't done that before, right? If they, right. when they're just like, oh, I have this idea about this electronic thing that I want to make and I want to hire some people to make it. A lot of people are very surprised at uh, how much money it costs just to add like something like Bluetooth to, you know, to a device. Well, legally, because yeah. you have to have your your device certified by the FCC, even if you're using a certified Bluetooth module in it, you still have to have your entire thing undergo testing and, you know, make sure that you're not emitting and stuff like that. So, um Yes, people I, people get excited about, you know, all the open source stuff and the Arduino stuff and things like that. And you're like, yes, yes. But if you want to make a product out of that and sell it, it's a it's a very different landscape. Right. More rules, more rules. And so it makes sense. I, I mean, you don't, you right? Like you don't want all of your devices to be stepping all over each other. You don't want to buy something off the shelf that just suddenly causes something else to not work. Right, interference and all that. Interference, yep. Um, I could speak a little bit on the you know sending stuff off for testing part. Oh yeah, you ever had to do that. I never done. I have testing. been, I've been adjacent to that. Um, I I did get to uh, observe as somebody that I was doing contract work for went went through that. Um. And it was interesting, like the anechoic chambers are super cool. They're like the most sound dead chamber you'll ever, you'll ever see anywhere. They're just these big chambers with a whole bunch of uh, foam. like foam. It's just a yeah. big giant foam. It's, it's metal with foam in it. <laughs> so yes, radio and sound wave absorbing. But yeah, but, um, it, all that stuff's expensive. Yeah. It's going to fail the first time. <laughs> it it and let me repeat that. It's going to fail <laughs> the first time. Yeah, and you're going to have to pay full price at least one more time. So when they say, "Oh, it's going to be six thousand dollars to test it," it is at least fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you need to have that much in the bank to move forward. Yeah. Um, Bob says that he got. His uh, technician, yeah. advance, and extra classes yeah. all in 2016, which is, did you get all of that in one day? I guess we'll <laughs> FCC. No, it's probably not all in one day. But yeah, no, I, I heard, I've, I've heard you can that. Do, like, you can do. I've heard of people sitting down. I've heard of people sitting down and getting, because they'll let you test as, mu- as much as you want. So oh. like it's one testing fee. So oh. if you, if you want to take the technician you pass, you can take the advance for free. Um, but, uh, cause it's just, it's a sitting fee. It's like $12 to sit. Okay. And, uh, I don't know. It's fun. I think you should do it. You can learn it all from YouTube. <laughs> I know. It's just like, it's another thing, right? It's like another hobby that I definitely don't have time for. <laughs> what, um, are, what, what hobby do you have right now? Oh, rock climbing. Climbing, so biz- business ownership. It's not exactly a hobby. It's, right. it's, a, it's a job, job. but it takes right. the time of it takes extra time, right? That you would normally devote to hobbies. Um, so there's there's that. Um, I snowboard occasionally when I can, um, and I knit and do yarn type things. And I have a garden going. The garden. Garden takes some time. Snowboarding, huh? Yeah. When yeah. I come, well, can you do that? You can't do that in the summer, though, can you? Well, I mean, you could go to the other hem, go to the other hemisphere, and I'm talking it. about like, well, it, it, <laughs> if I came and visited, I couldn't go snowboarding with you. <sighs> there are not many places in California that get enough snow anymore, sadly, to still be open in the summer. Occasionally, mm-hmm. Mammoth will have a killer year. And I have been snowboarding there twice on the 4th of July. And it was like, I mean, there was barely any, it was, there was only snow on the upper part of the mountain. And even that was like, not a lot, but it was pretty fun. 
So, but yeah, uh, they, I mean, Mammoth has good snowboarding through, uh, on a typical year through the end of April. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. We'll have to figure it out. Um, yeah. Traveling Roadshow. Oh my God. Like, Traveling Roadshow. I like show. that idea. You should talk about that. So, I got this idea for a uh, a travel show where I hop. I got a new truck and it's nice. It's a 2020. I'm not trying to show off. It's a 2022 Forerunner, but I got it so I can go on the road with it. And um, I'm going to hop in the truck with somebody and a bunch of cameras and a whole bunch of microphones. And we're going to go to a town near you. And we're going to meet local small businesses that do electronics hardware like me, like Carrie, like everybody else that we know, and uh, hang out with them for the day, eat dinner with them, get to know what they're like, get to know what their family's like, and uh, ask them all the burning questions. What would you, if you could send a message back to yourself five years ago, what would you say? What would you say? You know? Five, and, okay, so five years ago was like yeah. 20 seven no 16 ish 2017 2016 2017 ish yeah. uh because it's 2022 so we yeah 2017 okay i can do math um it would be keep it to yourself because, because, twister dots right. because you will sell enough of them that injection molding makes sense mm. <laughs> i was gonna say i was gonna say keep it Cause I'll show everybody on the show when it's, when we come and visit you, I'll come up with another one. It'll be and, good. Oh, good. All right. And I'm going to come <laughs> and see Jason. Jason, I don't know it yet. You still here, Jason? Yeah. He <laughs> uh, he usually hangs out me. while he does some of his uh, Fibonacci assembly and things. Oh yeah. yeah. He, he works. Um, and then. Oh, hello. J pill. Missed, missed well, that missed your notification. Hello. I will. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you got, I know you got to keep it a little clean. This is the official business stream, but we can get together for some beers sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but the idea with the show is to not Nobody necessarily to promote, Jason. <laughs> oh, there's Jason. To, to promote products that these people sell right like let's say i go see jason yeah let's show off the fibonacci boards but that's not what we're here for uh instead <laughs> it'll be more about learning more about you and and the and the person behind the product and and what drives you and what makes you want to come to do this for a living or maybe you're not doing it for a living maybe you do it you moonlight you still have a day job well why is that um what would make it what would make you want to quit your day job and do it full time? You know, all these all these different things. And so the idea is that I go and I see like 20, I do it for an entire month. I go see like 20 people and then I bring all the footage back and I hire somebody to edit it all. And then we got a YouTube series and then um, then I sell it to the travel channel and make money. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you won't see me no more. Um, but yeah. Like um, okay, so if I plug this in right now, I'm I'm all done soldering. It should blink. See it here? It should blink because it's already programmed. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna it see. Uses, uh, when you're using the Arduino IDE, you need to use something called LilyPad Arduino for oh, it to. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna. I can just. I'm just gonna plug it into a USB power source right now because yeah, sure, it should work. Yeah. Boop, boop. There it goes. Look at that. Boom! Blinky blinks. Power powers. Awesome. And so now basically I have so so you're saying it's it's more like one of the lily pad boards you use one it of It's using the lily pad bootloader. Okay, got it. Because got it's it. running at eight megahertz. Uh, um, okay. Because mm -hmm. I don't have a crystal. Now here's this is something mm -hmm. interesting about making soldering kits that people might not think about. Yeah. When you have a crystal on a microcontroller, you also need to have uh, capacitors go along with it, right? Yep. In, uh, in this case, you'd have 16 megahertz crystal with 22 picofarad caps. Those caps look a lot like the other caps. 
Yes. Is that for those caps say one zero four, the other ones say two two zero. But yep. you know, if and if you get it wrong, that's that doesn't work. So right. why so you can't have two different kind of caps in the same pit? It's if you were like, like me that didn't pay attention at all right. to the caps <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> or what they were and, marked at as I was soldering this, then you might you might be have a rude awakening when your crystal doesn't oscillate. Right, but the only question you can have about this kit is if the red LED or the blue LED know to go where, and that part doesn't even matter. All I did have another question, sure. but I didn't ask it at the time um, because yeah. I pieced out the answer. The other question, the other, the thing that um, that I wasn't sure at first which way it went was the switch, because, right. but. I think that that because the legs kind of go out the one side, it isn't quite a square pattern. So it was kind of obvious to me which, you know, which way it went. Um, but that one, if I was trying real hard to mess things up, <laughs> you know, I could have, I could have maybe tried, I maybe would have tried to put that in at 90 degrees if I, if I didn't have any prior experience and kind of have intuition on how that switch went. No, but no, that's that's the only thing. I mean, um, yeah, the three like if you already have like a tiny, tiny bit of electronics knowledge, right, then, you know, you can see the difference between the three resistors and the one inductor there. Right. And they and don't is the inductor just like power supply filtering? What's what's that? Doing? It's it's well, it's the analog channel filtering It's for the oh. analog uh, okay. reference voltage. OK, got it. And then, um, you know, the capacitors are, are all the same values and they're just in the obvious capacitor places. So, yeah, not not too much, not too much mysterious about this. What do you mean? Bob just said, I like the change up to use FTDI to power. Oh, so he likes that I'm using FTDI to power too. So there's a reason for that. Another yeah. thing about soldering kits, uh, they do make through hole USB uh, mini connectors but you can't pack them into kits because the pins get bent and if the pin gets bent even a little bit you cannot fit it in the board so you cannot pack kits with through hole usb mini things because you will get uh, annoyed customers also the pins are really close together and if they bridge and they plug it into their computer you didn't do them any favors yeah uh yeah so, <laughs> hmm, that's an interesting... all these things have happened so that was an interesting point. I wonder if can you go like super old school and use one of those big the old USB D's or the, the yeah the A's regular or, the regular D's. You know, A13 so, found me some that were black and gold, uh, and and those things are beautiful. And I thought oh. about using those, but they're so big. Yeah, they're so big. But if it's a through hole kit. Right, big, right, right, okay. right, right. So I mean that that was that was an option, a potential oh, that's, option. But that's the FTDI Tom, does power too. Yeah, Tom had Tom had that experience with the USB bent bent kit bent pins on a kit kit for Linnea. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a bummer. Now this kit also came with a breadboard and jumper wires. It did. Breadboard. Well, uh, I know, I know Tom has no clue what breadboard and jumper wires is. You want to show him what happens when you plug one into pin 13? <laughs> oh, Tom, Tom definitely knows about breadboards and jumper wires. Let's see. Um, this, eh. I like your packaging. It is very efficient. <laughs> it's like the breadboard like just fits in there. Man, so I told like, them, I said, I said, don't pack the breadboards. Uh, in those bags let me get some bigger bags and then they just they, they, they're, like, they're, just, they're like well these are the bags we have we're gonna keep packing them and i was like okay but uh right. yeah like there was <laughs> we got so what it is we ordered i ordered like a thousand bags and it was the wrong size or something like that oh hate that which is fine bags i mean you will use bags on anything yeah um all right so we're doing pin 13. Yes, that is the built-in the built-in blinky. That's right. And yeah, I don't want to I don't want to I always have a like I don't know. Some sort of OCD things where I never want to peel these apart. 
I'm like, no, I have to save them. It's just, it's stupid. I'll okay, go I'm grab some other ones off the shelf. You got plenty of them. I know. I have like a million of them, right? Go grab so... some other ones. Leave those alone. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm going to peel them. Uh, I'm going to do it. Do the white and the black. That's a good, that's a good pair. So, so while Carrie's doing this, does anybody have any burning PCBA questions they like to ask? It's uh, Cyber City After Dark. We can get all <laughs> your all your uh, burning uh, DFM question, <laughs> questions. I like out it. Of the way. I like it. Um, and then this is going to be. Yeah, I don't need ground over there, so I'll do ground over here. Let's see. Oh, so did you see uh, re responses about the favorite Cyber City Circuits kits yeah, earlier? Bob said that he really liked the Theremin. And yeah. uh, what was the other one? Uh, Jason's Fibonacci got a mention. And yeah, the Jason's alarm clock Fibonacci kit. Fibonacci was great. Yeah, and the alarm clock kit, man, that one was fun. I haven't uh, so done that one yet. That's the only one I haven't put fact, together. The, so it has a built-in MP3 player. Oh. Um. The uh, the song it plays in the alarm clock kit is a song that I played on guitar. It's a recording I made when I was in high school, and it was called the Digital Alarm Clock Song because it just it just seemed like the kind of song that would play to wake you up in the morning. So I called it the Digital. It just it was perfect. Nice. Tommy Marshall asks, "Is there yeah. an SMD size you recommend and why?" So there we go. That's a good question. Application uh, dependent. If you're going to be hand soldering stuff, I'd recommend 1206 and 0, uh, 0805. If you're going to be using tweezers, um, for Back. manufacturing for manufacturability, I'd recommend 0603 and 0805. Uh, do we do 0402. We just did a whole bunch of 0201 yesterday. Oh, and, oh my sorry. god! No, it's okay. So Chris, <laughs> you know Chris. Chris yeah. is really good at that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm just good looking. But uh, <laughs> we can do 0402 and we can do 0201. Um, but like we charge more for that. So and, and everyone does. It's not just yeah. us. Any yep. PCB assembler worth their money is going to charge you through the nose for 0201 and 0402. So avoid those when you can. Uh, <laughs> 0603 is the most common size. 0805 is really nice. Uh when you're doing KeyCAD, there's an option for hand solder pads. And then there's like, uh, it's like R0603 and then there's R0603 hand solder. Use the hand solder stuff. It's going to make it, it's going to make your life a lot easier for rework. And uh, if you can get away with it. Now, if it's a really tight, constrained design, maybe not. But I mean, they're not that much bigger. They don't take up that much more space and it makes everybody's life easier. Um, Bob asks, do we need to provide parts for assembly or do, or do you provide those for an additional fee? So, uh, yeah, we do whatever you want. Um, so we, we can do turnkey. Um, and uh, so when, when we buy parts, we just do markup. Again, that's an industry standard. Everyone charges you markup. So we just charge markup when we buy parts. Uh, otherwise, uh, we do consignment fees, uh, which is $5 per piece of cut tape. Now, the reason we charge a consignment fee per piece of cut tape is because we had a joker that <laughs> sent us like 10 pieces of cut tape for the same part. <sighs> and each of those pieces of cut, you have to have a special yeah. machine to splice <sighs> cut tape together. And yeah. that, that machine takes time. And that machine takes, that machine can be very frustrating to work with, but you have to <laughs> splice the cut tape together. So, um, so we charge five dollars per, and then it has to be loaded into the machine. Which loading into the machine, like the, the fastest we can do, it's like three five minutes per line. Um, that's the fastest we can do, and that's if nothing goes wrong. So we uh, we charge a consignment fee per line, and then we charge markup if we buy stuff. But we're happy to do whatever. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, cool. if, you, if you want to send the you know, email to sales at cybercitycircuits.com and uh, I love to talk to you. Nice. Always a salesman. <laughs> I like it. 
So we got we got our D13 blinking in time with our blinky blinking. There you go. So I I, I think our our I little work kit is totally working. Yeah. So we have a scout kit that we were putting together last week that we did everything except for the final assembly on. So I am going to try to read Tommy's very well put together instructions <laughs> while uh, while I'm doing this and do do the last little bit. And now, David, you are actually talented in the musical arena, and like you I, can do you know, stuff I, on. I like to remain humble. <laughs> so, um, but. Okay, so this is this is a bit of an on the spot thing. Um, sure. That MIDI guitar, do you, is that showable? Oh my god! Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so David built this thing that is pretty awesome, and I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that'll show it off because he can actually play it too. <laughs> um, guides, there we go. That's nothing. Wait, twenty five percent off debate t shirts. If you want to show off something, t shirts. You want to see the bell machine? Whoa. You know what? You you've seen the bell machine, right, Carrie? No, I have not. Know, what? I, the bell machine? No. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I know. Oh so disappointing. <laughs> so this thing. Is that thing's on. is it going to work? Are you going? What? Hold <laughs> on. It's making lights. It's making lights. Come on! You're making me look bad in front of my friends. No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And so it's got two speakers, uh, Anarchy A's, and they have like LEDs that blink in and out and stuff. It looks sick on stage with like fog machines and stuff. Uh, it's all 3D printed. Well, a lot of it's 3D printed. Um, but this is this is this is boring. Uh, we need. I need to. What? I, I, really, I really need to show you the bell machine. Okay. I, I, re I really need to. So is is Tommy Tommy's Oscatone? Is that who that is? Mm -hmm. I need to show him too. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, I'm on the assemble top instructions for the scout. Ciao. This is the top. And. I'm going to slide little square nuts into the little opening. Ooh, that sounds good. I, I... Ah. So I'm going to have to, so I'm going to mute you on here. I have <laughs> to put you on my iPad because I'm going to set the iPad up to see it because I need to control it from my terminal cool. on my computer. Yeah, just make sure that you're... Make sure that your speaker output on your auxiliary one is off. That's right. Yeah. It's a little it's a little weird. I wish StreamYard, that's like my really one of my only complaints about StreamYard is that I wish that they had um, a better a better setup for when you're doing um, multiple cameras from the same location. All right. Good. Let me know when you're ready for me to add your other one, and hopefully we won't feedback everybody to death. All right. Let me. I gotta log into my terminal real quick. Yeah. Are you on another? Um, are you on two on the same computer, or are you on two different devices? I'm on two different devices. Okay. Uh. So this one. So the second one. This one's. Yeah. Oh, yes, I think that, yes, this does still have a print support piece on it. I agree, this oh. this little bit, I think. 
I just didn't want to snap off too much <laughs> by accident. So let's see. Um, I just want to look at the pictures here. You can, Kara, you can go ahead and switch it over to the other camera if you want. To the other one? Okay. We're going to try this. Okay. Say something. Hold on. I think we're good. I'm not getting feedback, so that's good. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and oh, make I see. That. I see the support piece. Okay, cool. So it's just like a chunk. There we go. All right. So. Whoa. Look at let that. Me, let me mute the. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your favorite song? What's my favorite song? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I I go through phases, um, and it's hard for me to ever pick favorites. I like, I, I like to give it a try. <laughs> right, uh, anything by Alice in Chains. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to turn you down so it doesn't like over feedback and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah, you have to do you have to mute the speaker output on that one if you can. That is that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So, so tell us about the genesis of this of this instrument. So, um, well, I'll be right back. Hold on, I gotta go. Turn this one off. All right. How now? Oh, there we are. Yeah. Uh, so there was a TEDx, you know, TED Talks, right? Mm -hmm. There was a TEDx Augusta thing, and they were looking oh. for art pieces. And, yeah. And they were giving out, like, up to $500 for material costs. Nice. And I was like, I think I had just started, I just went to Micro Center for the very first time. And uh, <laughs> um. I bought a Raspberry Pi hat for servo controller because I thought I'd like to play with some servos. Yeah. And uh, this opportunity came up and I was like, I think I want to play with some servos. I bet you yeah, I can make a robot to play handbells. And uh, <laughs> it took 20, it took me 28 days from idea <laughs> to a finished product. Um, and uh, it took four different iterations. Uh, a servo cannot swing a bell fast enough for the dinger to ding. It yeah. Cannot do it. It's because, just not possible. Because the big ones are heavy, too. Like, the low right. like, bass bell tones. I guess, I don't know if it's bass, but whatever. Oh. Hey, I did bell choir very briefly in high school. Very, very briefly. <laughs> they also set us up one time, like, facing each other, which was not how we were usually uh faced which is a bad idea in a bell choir because when you really like go whang both at once uh you end up clanging bells and then it sounds really terrible and you're very embarrassed I have a little mini keyboard <laughs> i love it because it's like 
it's kind of like a xylophone, but it's bells, right? And it's all like fun, colorful colors, like a xylophone too. Right. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> I, I knew one. I needed to show you the bell machine. <laughs> bell choir high five. Woo, woo. I swear <laughs> it was like I was in bell choir for like three months or something. It was very weird. <laughs> well, now there is no board. The robots took your jobs. There is no <laughs> one more choir. I automated it out. <laughs> um, Excellent. And uh, so yeah, so that that was that was a blast. Um, mm -hmm. I did it over Christmas break, which was just it was just so much. It was like the first time. And like a very at that time, it was the first time in a very long time that I was able to like just lose myself in a project, like where right. I can just like work on something for more than twenty four hours. You know what I mean? Yes. Like yes. just just go, let's just go, and uh, it was a blast. And I learned uh, so much about how the dinger and a bell will not work. If you <laughs> <laughs> I believe they are called clappers. Okay. Uh, but I use boom bell choir. Uh, but I built it all in my backyard. And I had a little That's shed awesome. in my backyard. We built it all in my backyard. A friend of mine came over to help me paint it and stuff, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. And I have a program to do fifty-two different songs. Whoa! No, so what is your favorite songs. song to play on it? Oh my god, my favorite song is the bot dings a lot polka. <laughs> you want to hear the bot dings a lot polka? It's yes. really good. All yes, right, hold on. I do. I do. All right. It's going to play. <laughs> Let me see. Is this still on? Yeah, no, we can still hear it. Yeah. I'm going to take this back over there and I'll sh show somebody. That's awesome. <laughs> a little a little jumpy video but <laughs> we got a good close-up of the bells <laughs> briefly <laughs> i'm trying to get to stop hold on stop there we go <laughs> <laughs> okay so you did this bell the, the bells thing for a tedx talk like so did you actually give the talk about it too Oh no! It was just it was like a just a uh, interactive art piece that they wanted okay. out in front. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. And uh, that's cool. It's fun. So I I have uh, I did a concert with it, like a real life punk rock show concert with it. Yeah, I was the I opening act. I was Cyber City Casualties. That was the name of my band. <laughs> and uh, and uh, um. And so I got there before everybody else. Like the you know the guys that the other bands are there, but like before any of the uh, spectators came, uh -huh. and and I set up a, an ad hoc Wi Fi network for the bell machine, <laughs> and so I set it up. I set it up on the stage before anybody got there, and uh, I I had it under a uh, a tablecloth, and then before the show started, I had the guy that was running the thing go out there mm -hmm. and take the tablecloth of it to, to show everybody. And, and and there was a fog machine. Chris had an old fog machine because he does escape room stuff. So he had this old fog machine. So I put the fog machine behind the bell machine. It had a remote control. So then I, I'm in the back with a laptop and I'm able to control the bell machine from my laptop. And I just have it start playing music. And it played the polka song. And and then I turn on the fog machine. The fog just starts rolling out. And and and, and, and there's everyone. There's got to be like 50 people in this room. Everyone's just sitting there in awe of this robot playing handbells, playing polka <laughs> with handbells. And no one has any clue what's going on. Like, <laughs> that sounds no amazing. Any idea what was going on? It was just that so, it was, it was a surreal experience. 
it was it was so much fun. Um, and uh, and then hopefully maybe when the pandemic's over, I can get to do it again. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Let's see here. All right. Who's in so, the chat? Ooh, nice. Tom I don't am, like uh, bells. I'm installing the keyboard here for the scout. I had um there was like a little bit of just I don't know extra filament caught in one of these um in one of the holes that the nuts slid into. So I had to kind of just like clear that out before the nut would slide all the way in. So uh so that's what I've been doing a little bit of. And then um now our keys. I'm not sure that I actually I either like took too much flash off here or not enough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have a strange shape here and I feel like I might have broken a small piece off. But I'm not I'm not sure. Who printed um, that? Was that did that come with the kit or did you No, I we printed we printed that. Okay. We printed it. So um how much are these kits? Ooh, I forget off of the top of my head, but we are almost it's at... advertising for Tommy for a minute. Yeah. So I'm I curious. Know, right? I think I want to buy one. Oh I've been seeing them. They're they're all the rage. Good. Every kid that's I'm telling that... you, all the cool kids have scouts. I know. I know. <laughs> and I don't have one. So <laughs> you need one. But you I need do have one. Hold on. The uh, the poly five 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 is also a very good one too for pure silly joy. Yeah, that one's super silly. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one came out. Uh, so let's see, that one's the fully. So he he has a few different versions, right? He has like a fully assembled version. He has like the DIY version. He has the version with three D printed parts, or you can print your own three D three D printed parts. Um, so there are a lot of different options, which is which is nice. Um, let's see the. Oh wait. Oh, and he has some blemishes on there too. If you are cool with you know, getting getting blemishes. Oh, there we go. DIY kit. Um, so the DIY kit is forty two to sixty five, depending upon if you want the three D printed parts or not. And like one that's fully assembled, you don't have to do anything. You just get it and play it is 125. Cool. Which, yeah, I think is very, very legit and reasonable for what it is, you know? Yeah. And it's all open source. So you could, you know, make your own circuit boards and everything if you wanted. Um, but yes, so now. So he thinks they're still. Oh, you think that the, okay, cool. So Tony think thinks the that there's still some flush. brim on there. Oh, is this whole no? Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see, I see what's going on there. Okay, so that's the brim that's supposed to be there. Cause and then this was what we're uh okay. Yeah, I'm just looking, I'm trying to like look at the pictures without going to a different web page. <laughs> Um, to see, hey, Tom, just, but just so you know, Tommy, I see your stuff and it's cool. Oh, it's super cool! Congratulations, great super job! Cool. Keep up the good work. There, that's there at the oh, bottom of the keys right. at the front of the instrument. Yeah, okay, I think so too. And also, like, so our 3D printer, something that's like a little bit, um. You know, 3D printing is always a challenge. Everybody's 3D printers are going to behave a little bit differently. It depends upon like what slicing software you use as to like how all of the extrusions come out and stuff like that. So um, like this is not like a fault in the kit is what I'm trying to say. It's just, you know, 3D printing is going to be different. And um, so our 3D printer tends to like spooge a bit on the first layer and, you know, we've set it up a little bit to do that because, um, yeah, you want we would, that. yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to have first layer adhesion problems. Right. Right. So, uh, we're a little aggressive on that, on that first layer and it tends to kind of like spooge out a lot. And, um, 
which then can make parts that have to like snap together and stuff like that a little more challenging because we might have like a little bit of like excess kind of like flashing in places. So, um, so yeah, like I'm having, I can tell right now that I'm having like a little bit of, of an issue with that on the, on the keys because we had like a fair bit of, um, like of, of kind of excess on some of those. We had to, some of the keys when we printed them were actually like um, stuck together because there were so much, you know, so much goo there. So we had to clean them up a little bit, <coughs> but yeah. But yeah, that's just, that's just us and our printers, you know. Um, every printer is going to be different. And like, I'm sure that a lot of people just like won't even have that thing at all. So, okay. I think this one's, my one key is a little bit weird and I can't tell, can't quite tell why. Um, like this last, it's basically like this, this last little corner. I might just have to like, I feel like there's a little bit of extra something somewhere that's interfering. And I think I might have to do, to do a little bit of scraping maybe. Let's look at that. So it was, yeah. Was like you might consider part. getting a deburring tool to trim the edges of your smushed first layer. <laughs> Yeah, I actually don't think it's the first layer here. It's like, I don't know. I have like a little bit of like weird scalloping on the Get like a razor blade. Get like a, a hobby knife to it. Watch your yeah. fingers. I'm getting there. Be careful. Yep. Yep, yep. There we go. I'm just going to scrape this down a little bit. Who did your sick notepads? Sick notepads. Where are these? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we get those from Staples. Oh, no kidding. Right? No. They look nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just, you know, we just took our logo and stuff, and I think we used their online editor to, um, to, you know, just do the text and, like, do the color, color stripes and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to... So... We got something coming in the mail Monday, and it's going to be for a giveaway. Ooh. Uh, and you might actually dig it. You might be jealous, and I want to make you jealous with this one because this is Excellent. a good idea. I'm ready. It, uh, Cyber City Circuits mouse pad, full desk. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. It's a Cyber City Circuits desk pad. Ooh, check that out. And uh, awesome. We ordered 10 of them. And uh, they're on their way. They're, and so if that's, they're only, we get them from Inked, Play Mats. Ink, it, it's, a, it's a Magic the Gathering mat is what it is, right? Oh, nice. Uh, but you can have whatever you want on it. And you can make it any size you want. So it's just a really sweet mouse pad. And it's super comfortable. Uh, it's nice. Nice. You want one? Nice. Does it uh, also serve as like a cutting mat or is it not quite durable no. for that? No, it's, 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 it's a Magic the Gathering mat. Got it. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> um, but, it's just, but it has the sick Cyber City Circuits logo on it. So Heck yeah, that makes it better. Nice. Have okay. you been watching this stuff? Go got ahead. all this flashing off. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I just haven't been aggressive enough. <laughs> I've been too tentative about like, oh, I don't want to break off a piece that I'm not supposed to be breaking off because I'm not paying very good attention right now. So I could I could totally be being more uh, more aggressive with this. <laughs> Cool. Have you been? It's uh, it's it's a lot like a. It feels like a classic mouse pad. On well, no, it's definitely a better material than you know your old AOL mouse pad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it's very. It's it's from a company called Ink Game Mats. This is clearly high quality stuff. I've had this one for about a year. It's got. <laughs> It's dirty, but I bet you it'll wash. If I actually tried to wash it, it would wash pretty good. Uh, 
uh, the entire border has like embroidery on it, so it won't fray. Oh, cool. uh, it's really nice. Have you been watching this? Uh, well, hmm. is it Ooh, okay I if I talk about? Now. Is it okay if I talk about other people's projects that aren't? Yeah, in heck yeah. Because yeah. that stuff that Nick Poole's been doing is exciting me. You've been seeing that bean counter thing he's been spinning up. Yes, I the little so the, the tape counter. Yeah, talk talk about talk about that and what that is. I want. I just I just want it so bad. I, I want know, right? <laughs> of them. I want to put them on lanyards. I just want to put them all over the office, and I just want to be like, tell me how many parts are there, and then they right? can they yeah. they can actually sit there and tell me how many parts there are. Uh, yeah, it it that it's it's so simple for people that don't know what I'm talking about. This Nick Pool guy, who is this? I, I he has a story all of his own. And it's probably a very interesting story. But he basically <laughs> got a bunch of body mods, quit his job, I think, bought a bunch of land in rural Virginia and started a PCB fab. And hey, so, you're that guy. Signaled it. Oh, that's Nick. Hey. Oh, hey, Nick. <laughs> uh, but, like, man, that bean counter Ooh. thing is exciting. I want one so bad. I, I messaged, oh, I, I've i nagged him a little bit about it. He <laughs> says that as soon as I, I told him, I was like, as soon as they go on sale, I want one. I want like five. And uh, <laughs> um, I feel like, ooh. okay, I should probably be reading the instructions more. Yeah. So it's, it's basically like a super cool little parts counter that counts how many parts you have left on a cut. Um, on a piece cut, of tape. cut tape. It just counts your cut tape. Yeah. Counts your cut tape. And it, and he's got it. He's got like this. He's been doing a lot of iteration on his firmware and he's got it now where it'll decrement. So like if you go one way, it increments. If you go the other way, it'll decrement. And um, which every part counter I have that has any value to me will always decrement. I have a few part counters and if they and, and they're just not. And I've had a couple that wouldn't decrement and you can't rely on them. They're unreliable. Um, uh. but like, uh, I would love, I would love to hear Nick Poole's story sometime. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a wild story. Uh, maybe you should get him on the stream sometime. I'll be sure to watch Heck that. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll the, totally uh, hit up via Twitter DMs for sure. And, uh, Nick Poole's on my short list for my, my, my Cyber City USA uh, cross country tour. Yes. Um, yes. I might hit him on the way back from LA. Uh, nice. So, okay. I think I'm to the assemble bottom part. And we got speaker. Yep. Going in the speaker slot. And there's like a little, um, notch for the wires to go through i think right i'm doing it the right way yes um yes little residence resonance cavity there i'm such a wimp i like never want to push things too hard yeah you don't want to break it <laughs> i know i'm like always i'm always tentative about this stuff better than i used to be but now um, that battery holder is that a 3D printed part? Did you have to make that yourself, or is that provided? This is a—it's a 3D printed part. Here, I'm gonna zoom in on this. Uh, what, what kind of what that kind he of conductor provides, does it use? I know. So the, the battery holder is totally my favorite part. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's see. Let's do. How did you come up with that? Do that, right? So, yeah, so the part is 3D printed and the springs are actually like sold by DigiKey. Who knew? Yeah, they're, yeah, right? yeah. they're just replacement battery springs, sure. Yeah, they're just like, like the, the normal battery springs. And so he like molded in these nice little like holding notches and stuff like that. So you just like slide the springs into your little battery holder and you like make your own battery holder. And he has it, these nice little wire guides as well. So like oh, a little knot brilliant. there to keep your wire and the wire like goes through here. Oh my God. I know, right? Super that, good. Tommy, if you're still here, this is genius implementation. 
You could write yep. a book about this. This is great. Totally. Am I in? No, I'm not in. I'm not in. So without it in the keyboard, you have the buttons. So it works outside the keyboard, right? Because you have the tactile buttons and pop the speaker into it. Yes, with the speaker. Well, that's the right side. Um, I'm just like yeah. I'm, like looking here to see if I have any flashing or stuff that's like interfering with it. I can cuss on your stream, right? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Tommy, this is fucking impressive as hell. <laughs> this is great. This is really good. I can't imagine how many iterations you had to go through to come up with that masterpiece. That's uh that's great. I think I might want to I, I might print that out just to look at it. You should. <laughs> you should. It. It's super good. Ah, there we go. Ha ha. All right. Awesome. So that snaps in there. I'm just like so, impressed that the snapping in is like working really well. And so what does it run like, all on? My, anytime a... I design snap in pieces, they're kind of crap. <laughs> I don't have that much experience doing it either. What but... does it use? Is that a 328? What is that? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's a it's a full on Arduino clone. OK, what's the what's that? So you little... just one key at a time. What's that dip eight package up there, though? What's that for? Oh, that's an amplifier. OK. Yeah, it's an it's an amp for the uh, for the sound. Um, OK, where am I in the instructions? Still writing the instructions. OK, OK. Now we put the battery holder in. So the battery holder goes in with wires going that way into its cavity in the middle. So there are like these nice little um, supports there that it goes in between right here and right here. It's a little hard to see on ours because we printed ours with translucent filament. So neon translucent. Ne yes, neon translucent filament. <laughs> so easy to appear on camera. Oh, and but you like want to be fancy there. I know we're all we're all fancy here. I just want to make sure. Let's see. I just want to make sure again that I'm not like interfering with anything. Well, is that tab like? What's that tab? Um, Are you supposed yeah, to? Yeah, I'm it? just actually. I'm just looking at that. I'm like, oh, was I supposed to like fold down those tabs because they? What do you say, do Tommy? Look like they're kind of in the way, and maybe I missed. Maybe I missed a step. Man, you're gonna make me. You're gonna make me want to do more soldering kits just so I can be in this fun show with you more often. <laughs> well, so this show kind of started because I had too many soldering kits, <laughs> and I was just like, "We need to put these together. Maybe we should just live stream it." Bend the tabs. Okay. Yay. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Um. You supposed to bend them in or bend them out? Yeah, that's what I. That was my next. Come question. on, Tommy. I definitely. Definitely missed that step. Uh, let me. Oh, look! Assemble battery pack. I think they're better. So he. I think he bends them up. It looks like so that the bottom remains flat, which makes sense. So I am going to do that. Do that now. Hopefully without munching my wires. This is cool. Okay. And then bend this guy up so that it's flat. There we go. That'll be good enough. Okay, now it's going to fit much better. Oh, yes. And look at that. <laughs> Boom. Now oh, you no. did it. Problem, yeah. First try. Dang, I just really freaking love that battery holder. Really do. I know, right? <laughs> it's my favorite part. Favorite part. Okay. And so that is snapped in. And now, ooh, the switch clutch. Um, do do. Oh wait, did I miss? Ooh, PCB. Nestled into its aligners. Oh, look at that. So there are holes in the PCB here and they go into pegs. And then there are a couple holes that I think are 
open maybe for the um for the uh mounting so that goes there look at that oh i see it goes a little bit there okay got it ah, it's like this guy knows what he's doing i know right or, now does it have screws or, or are there. they just pegs that's there that's there that's there um there are both pegs and then there are holes so oh my god just wanted to make sure that i'm not like pinching any wires right mm -hmm. doing that a little carefully there now oh. that right angle pin header is that just a like an ftdi header um yes that yes that's the uart yep okay. exactly exactly i'm like arranging my little wires here kind of like put those there maybe tuck those under a little bit cool okay yes orient the wires so that they're relatively contained within the space and won't poke up where the keys will be yes done cool all right now adding the switch clutch so this is pretty cool. It's like a little um, switch cap type of thing. So it goes over this so that you can actuate your on off button nicely. And let's see, add it to its spot around the switch. Ah, got it. So yeah, so it just keys in like that. Yep. So you can go ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. That's nice. That's super cool. Uh, and then finish, align, enclosure top onto bottom, snap the two halves together, try to make sure the keys mount rail and keys stay aligned as you do this. Oh, it's an intentionally tight fit. Be brave. I will try to be brave. All right, and then after that, we put the knob on. Interesting, okay. Ooh, be brave, be brave, okay. You know, it's it's projects like this and like stuff that Jason makes, and like all these people make that aren't in the electronics Twitter community, really yeah. makes you wonder: one, what are they doing? At, you know, for for a living. And two, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Like, <laughs> like, come on! Like, right? you think you think you're doing really good at something, then suddenly something like this shows up on the on the ground, and I know it makes everything that you do look bad, right. <laughs> or that I do look bad. Nothing I do looks bad. <laughs> we all know that's not true. Ooh, got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it there. Got it there. Got it. There. Sort of. Maybe. Almost. Sweet. Put it on one end. I know. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay. Oh. I, just I do like the, the satisfying snap that I hear. I know. It is it is good. It is good. There have been no scary snaps yet. There, I do have like a little bit of a fit issue right here, though, I can see. Let me, let me look at this. Let's see what's going on there. I think I, our print just like maybe bowed out there a little bit so i'm just gonna try to get that side in first and see how that maybe goes i feel like there is something maybe i don't have the oop <laughs> well that didn't sound good i know no 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 that was, it was just the switch that was the switch I, yeah. I, was just, I just want to make sure that i have this board all the way down i believe i do um but just in case no that's that should be all the way down that should be all the way down i think so i think so and the little plugs are sort of flush with the top of the board so that should be okay um this switch does not appear appear to be directional so that should be good and you oh maybe i'm having trouble with you again that might be the problem let's see let me see yeah 
I feel like one, I feel like the corners of my keyboard are not behaving like they should. Um, Let's see if we had any more questions. Did I miss anybody's yeah. questions earlier? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, the two on the end. Oh, there we go. I got one. Oh, got it. Ha ha. Okay. Jason right, asked now... me to play some Skinner, and I couldn't do that. <clears throat> I don't have Skinner on it. <laughs> I should put Freebird on it. Just You're right. <laughs> just, just to mess with people, have like a 15 minute version of Freebird on handbells and Stairway. post it on Twitter. <laughs> okay, so that is all going together well. It's just this. I have like a little, I don't know, a little corner by the switch that's a little that's interfering because it looked like my print sort of bulged out in that section just a little bit. Obviously, I just need a Pressa, right? Like, <laughs> we're so... Well, the cool so thing is, is that if you break it, you just go and make another one. It is true. It is true. So, you know, don't break it, but like, you know... Maybe... No. Oh, dang it. <laughs> like, it was in this side and then it wasn't. Okay. I definitely need to do this side first, though, because of the print being a little funky, I think. So Bob asked me if I ever built anything for Seth with Oak Dev Tech. Oh. And so, no, I haven't, but I did purchase. So he did a bunch of his own assembly. And I purchased, right, I was going yeah. to do a soldering kit with his, with one of his boards. And I bought 150 of his boards. And then we never oh, did nice. a soldering kit for it. So I still have them. And then, uh, and then he closed up shop. So I still have 150 Aww. of his boards, and, and and he ain't going to buy them back. So, <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, uh, so well, someday, maybe, uh, maybe I might do that again. Um, I guess I could do a giveaway with them. They're like uh, some at Sam D21 boards, I think. Ha! Ah! Did you get it? I think so. Yes. Ah. He said don't be don't be shy about it. So I just went for it. Okay. Okay. And by the way, we did pre we tested all of the electronics last time, so should still work. <laughs> okay, intentionally tight fit. Be brave. I was brave. We did it. Okay, and the knob. So he also print his own little custom knob here. Which I feel like, ooh, do we have a silver Sharpie? Oh, yeah. We're going to bling this up. The silver Cheers. Sharpies are the best ones. Definitely. If have you to ever go to a concert, like writing on circuit boards and all sorts of stuff. If you ever go to a concert and you want an autograph, bring a silver Sharpie with you. Why is, okay, wait, why silver Sharpies for autographs? Well, because you want them to autograph a thing and it shows up better in silver. Yes. I don't know. I got my Sega Genesis autograph because I had a silver Sharpie. So. <laughs> okay. So I am going, so we want to put the knob, um, right. Aligning its dimple to the little marker on the top of the pot shaft. Right. Okay. Yes, exactly. <sighs> we want to make sure that it's actually uh, pointing in the right direction when we put it on. Okay. <sighs> Maybe. Hey, yeah. Okay, cool. And then two machine screws up through the bottom of the enclosure bottom. Aha! One. Ah, so that attaches that two. that only that attaches the board and the top to the bottom and everything with only two screws. I know. You know, um, um, there'd be some serious design engineers in the '80s. I'd be super jealous right now. <laughs> Yeah, know, right? the part stuff from the 80s with dozens of screws. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a sapling. That's right. It was a sapling. I got uh, a box of like 150 of them. Cool. Um, that stinks that he closed up shop, but he has a full-time. He's full -time going back job. to school, right? 
he said he, he said that in a tweet i think oh i know he has a full-time job doing like oh, high-speed stuff for some big company yeah that probably takes a fair bit of time right you know it's hard i mean you know running running a business is a full-time job right and, and then you get running the business is a full time job, and then you have to actually work in the business. <laughs> you have to work Someone in the business. To you have to talk work. about the business. <laughs> the work Otherwise, part. people don't even know you exist. Right, and then you have to do sales, and mm -hmm. you have to. I pay somebody just to go to Atlanta, which is a three hour drive. I pay somebody to go to Atlanta to go have lunch with people Can't on my behalf because I don't have time to go myself. Key. All right. Okay. Let's see. Machine screws. Uh, everything was fine. <laughs> the screws may seem unnecessary. Ah, but using them will cut down the mechanical click noises from playing. Don't skip them. We didn't skip them. Oh, not too tight. If we over tighten, keys will get held down. You know, just, just back off just a little bit. I usually don't over tighten screws in plastic, but, you know, just How, to make how sure. easy do you think that thing is to take back apart? Um, not, not bad. Just undo the two screws and pop it out. Okay. Yeah, it's just like, I, you know, I think the first time it goes together, especially while you still have like little bits and stuff everywhere, it's going to be harder. I feel like we might have one spoogey key. We'll see. We'll see how that, how it, how it goes. Um, that thing is sexy. <laughs> I'd never put that in the screws until you've tested the thing. Yeah, probably should have. Okay. So... Shit. Well, we do have the batteries in there. It, it should just go on, right? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, we do have a key held down. Is it that one? Oh, no, it's that one. It's that one. Try hitting it. I know. No, serious. Like, you hit where the button is. Just go bam. I'm just, I'm feeling... Yeah, why is that one? We had a weird key on the other one. No, but the key was on the weird key was on the end, and the end keys are actually doing okay. It's like one in the middle, which I did not have, which I did not expect. It is a little bit. I'm just gonna back off on the screw just like a little bit more, just in case it's like pushing on something. Oh, that one is definitely feels like it doesn't travel as much, which is interesting. The rest of them feel fine. Um, oh, no. Ah. Okay. Well, might have to troubleshoot that. How much time we got left? We got like ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, hurry up. We'll see. we'll see if we can see if we can figure it out. Okay. While oh, Carrie's doing you. that, does anybody have any questions? I'm marking marking my problem key with an X with a silver sharpie, so I don't forget which one it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bob says when he earn, earned his MBA in the evenings, the dean right. called called him overtime students since you all had full time day jobs. Yeah, like I couldn't imagine trying to trying to manufacture and sell things with a full time other day job. I mean, it was even hard to do that with a like half time consulting job as like as the other half, and that's why. I stopped doing that in the past year because I wanted to focus on the Alpenglow, make more things. All right. Okay. Yeah. Did you, uh, is maybe the wire from the battery holder holding it down? Because it's right next to where the battery holder is. Oh, no, maybe. He oh, says, I, I wonder while it's on and see if it's still held down. I think I see what's going on. Okay. So it's, um, I have, zoom in. Wah, wah, wah. Nope. Zoom too much. Too much. No, I can't zoom see anything. Not oh, right. that close. <laughs> um, this battery tab is mm -hmm. sticking up a little bit too much. So the key is actually hitting it before i think mm. but then then it wouldn't go down at all though but it but its travel was smaller than the other ones so maybe 
Uh, oh, because the keys are at the, the notes are at the top. So actually mm -hmm. if it was held, if the bottom of the key was being held up, that would make sense. Okay. So well, I'm take a, going take a screwdriver to... and just kind of press in, take the butt yeah. in. Yeah. Put some, um, put some uh, mass into it. Let's see. I might actually just pop this out if I can. Oh, no. What'd you do? I just broke my speaker wire. <laughs> well, at least you got at least you got a soldering iron nearby. I I do. I I can fix this. Okay. So I think then what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna turn it on. Oh, on now with the enclosure open. Yeah, turn it on. Although now that my speaker yeah. wire is <laughs> now that my speaker's busted, I'll have to fix that first. But um I, I am reasonably confident that that's the, that's the problem. Okay, so we will just fix this real quick. Hello. Um, so if I was a super pro, what I would do is uh, get like a little bit of heat shrink and put mm -hmm. it around the wire first and then mm -hmm. solder it and then slide the heat shrink over because that would help um, strain relieve it just a, a little bit. Who has um, time for that? What's that? Who, Who has time? time for that? I know, right? Yeah. I don't know. So instead, I'm just going to peel this up a little bit. And... Use your teeth for that, right? What's that? Use your teeth to peel it back, yeah. right? Ah. <laughs> I'm actually going to turn this off for right now, just so it doesn't accidentally short into something else. Never know. All right. Oh, I, mean, I can send. Oh, I just realized. Getting this. Okay. All right. And. Yeah. I'm going to try to do a reasonably good job at this. So I sent a bunch of emojis and I thought it was a uh, an emoji dabbing, you know, like that. But it's <laughs> elbow coughs. So I just coughs on everybody. Oh. I thought it was dabbing. Sorry. Ah. Uh, um, and it says elbow here. cough. It says this, elbow this, cough on it. Right. This is, this is <laughs> even more of... A reason why I should not be. My wife tells me I should never be dabbing. <laughs> so this is a you know another point for her, I guess. Okay, so now you're fine there. You're fine there. It's this corner I have to deal with. So I'm gonna just try to um, do that. Ooh, it did move. Is it enough? Might be. I am going to. Just okay. I think that's good now. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Now you're going back in, Ms. Battery Holder. I think, I think that's is that in all the way. I have a question for the people in the chat. Yeah. Ask what's them your, away. What's your favorite emoji? <laughs> it's a hard one for me because I think that there might be... Um, thank you. I think that there might be... Here, let me zoom out a little bit so we don't, don't have that problem. Um, there are definitely ones that I use a lot, but I'm not, not sure I would call them my favorite favorite. Okay, so <laughs> eggplant. <laughs> Fuck emojis. <laughs> My favorite is the fire emoji because oh, yeah, that's a good because I'm Cyber City Circuits. And then my second favorite is the smiley face with the heart eyes. Oh yeah, that's uh, a good one. Is yeah, so hey, hey, see if the problem turn it on before you reassemble it. Okay, hang on. I'm just like looking. Okay, I think that'll be good with the wires. Okay. 
Yep. <laughs> I know, right? It's I'm well, so because, right? It's hard to. It's so, it's so rude of me to laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's just without it all snapped together and like, right, right, right. It properly, just, it just it's, yeah. Around. But it it is not. I mean, obviously, none of the keys are unduly pressed at the moment, and they look all pretty good. Like none of them are like sticking up higher than the other ones from soldering or anything like that. So that is all good. Um, I just want to make sure now I'm going to turn it off while I stick it back in here. I just want to make sure that I'm not um, squishing any of the wires because we wouldn't want to squish our wires. So that's going to be good. That's going to be good. I think that will be all good with the wires. Okay. Okay. Now we just got to snap it back together again. We'll be good. Take a deep breath. Make sure you stretch. Right. Bend at the knees. What was it? Be, be bold. Be, be brave. brave. Be brave. That's good. Oh, that one feels so much better now. Okay, now before I screw it in, it is all snapped in. It is all snapped in. Yay! So. The, it, it uses a 328, but it doesn't sound like uh, the tone library or the tone function. What is that? What? What's what? Because I've done keyboards with a 328, and it sounds nothing like that. Yeah, you know what? I have not. I I have only gotten this far in it. I haven't looked at the schematic or at any of the code. Well, I'm asking so Tommy. That would be a good question for Tommy if he's still. Yeah, I want to know. Spill, spill spill the secrets. What's a uh, How'd you, how'd you get that 328 to make that sound? Because I can't, I, I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm, I'll just sit here and wait. Yeah. <laughs> I know, um, I know. It's a little done, and then a, you have to wait for people to write. And right. it's all good. I've done a few different keyboard kits. And, and it's I'm, all I'm good. Get that sound out. It sounds great. It sounds like a, it sounds like a blast. Um, <laughs> I like how it sounds sort of mad science-y, you know? Like it has good, like, whatever that is the sound reminds me of the theremin a bit yes it does it does like sound very similar to the theremin okay hey tommy can we hang out sometime and you can tell me <laughs> some code i just love to hear about it yeah like uh because that that's that i would love to know how you're doing that Oh, dang it. We did it again. They're too tight. Turn it's turn it on. One. Turn it on and then loosen the screws up until it stops beeping. Which one is it? Well, I suppose we can. Well, it could be a sharp. Not the same one. The black keys do things too. Oh, I forgot about the black keys. <laughs> You can tell. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I think two of them are a little wonky. I think two of them are a little wonky. Let's see. So let's uh, undo this guy. It might just be that that guy's a little bit tight. Let's see. Hey, Tommy, where do you Are you in the United States? Or are you, uh, um, are you like one he's, of them? He's British also people? California. Ooh, they, I'm going to spend a lot of time area, I do believe. I'm going to be spending a lot of time. Uh, Tommy, can I come and hang out with you sometime? <laughs> he says, Travel listen to the electronics while it's road on. Show. Oh, okay, so, so that so, one's so, good. So turn it on and then loosen the screws. It's I can still... Hmm? Oh, okay. Now that one's not doing anything. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Got it. Ah, 
that sounds but, great. Yeah, I have two keys that are like a little weird that I'm going to have to work on a little bit, I think, and see if there's like something in the print that is um, that is kind of interfering. The, the soldering of the keys looked pretty good. Like they all looked flush to the board and stuff like that. So I don't think it's the actual keys. I think it just has something to do with the... Um, with the printed parts. So but now he's saying but, but while it, it's it, on, while it's on, tighten the screws back down. And so you can get some good action out of it. Yeah. So this one doesn't have good action. And that's why I think I need to take it apart again because um, it's pretty loose now. It's like, you know, the screw head is almost, almost flush with the bottom. Oh, oh. Oh, that's better. Ah. Okay, let me see. Maybe, maybe it was just like way too tight. Well, it definitely feels better now. Yeah, that's um that one still a little bit of a like a can feel it actuating i think like i feel it clicking but it just doesn't always like give the tone unless i like really press on it whereas the other ones all are like very very snappy yeah i imagine i'm going to end up spending like a week in california yeah which i, I, I think you i need might a week out here, here. At least I gotta see. I gotta see you. I gotta see Deborah. I gotta see Saxon. I gotta see uh, Tommy, Bob. I think Bob lives in California. Love to meet Bob. Um, yeah, JP's out there. Be cool to yep. see JP's little light thing he, he's doing. Geek Mom Projects. Deborah, yeah, Deborah. is in the LA area. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just such a dense area, and it's a kind. Isn't it the kind of place where like it takes you like an hour to drive like ten miles? Isn't that a thing? It depends upon where you are. Bay Area and LA, it can depending upon the time and the road. Uh, San Luis Obispo, though, it's pretty nice. There's not a lot of traffic here. No, it's terrible. yeah, but you're I'm <laughs> after LA, right? That would make What's sense. That? I, I'd see you after LA. Yeah, you'd you'd go from LA, you'd drive up the coast, visit me and uh, my and friend Mark too, who's a ham, and yeah. and then you'd continue on up the coast to the Bay Area. And then yep. I'd cut over. I, I I don't know of any reason to go to Seattle, so I probably won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seattle. But I'll, sure. I'll I'll leave from there and go to Kansas because we all yep. know who's in Kansas. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. we spent a couple days with him, and then I don't think there's much between Kansas and wherever next is. <laughs> so, just a lot. There of are life. apparently a bunch of states in the middle, right? They're know. just getting away. I think. Well, you could uh, you could see if you could get. Uh, oh, this is what you have to do. I got mm. it. Mm. Allie, get Allie to meet you in Colorado. And get it yeah spark fun. oh and i go do spark fun yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah I, that yeah i would like to walk around spark fun that'd be cool yeah their building looks great i do want to go to new york i want to go see uh, you know jose came down and saw me so i want to go see jose or joey and uh um and i like to go see adafruit yeah. Maybe if if PT will let me come in. Yeah. And uh so then I'll guess I'll go back down the coast. I'll hit up Nick Poole and then I'll hit up I got some people in North Carolina and then I'll be coming home. I think you basically you need to take a year to do this. I mean that's really the the right thing. But I don't bring your production year. person with you oh. like you know, two people traveling all across the U.S. <laughs> well, it, it's a, it's it, I have to run a business too, so like oh details, details, whatever. So <laughs> Just I'm start like, selling more soldering kits. It'll pay for the road trip. Well, maybe maybe California is season two. Mm. Maybe I just do East Coast. 
for East season coast, one. West coast. Yeah. yeah. Um, ah, nice. Bob saying, so he's, he's around Phoenix. But where, but where are you from? Like, oh, should, there's a get oh, together. I might uh, be able to get to Phoenix. LA. <laughs> yeah, Phoenix, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, so so season one, all right, here's the plan. Season one is East Coast. Season two, I have sold it to the Travel Channel. And then Travel Channel pays for it all, and I can just go anywhere. There you go. Yeah. Cyber City USA coming uh, this fall. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> um, oh, is that, is that, is this it? This, this is pretty much it. It's like seven o'clock, which is, you know, kind of our, our shut it all down time. And we made two things today. We finished, yeah. finished the scout. Although I will say, I, I still want to debug this guy just a little bit, but, um, but other, other than like one little key that's like misbehaving, it's great. Do you have, so did do you, you see have Tommy's a... uh, did you see Tommy's comment about he said glide, glide an octave or pull, pulled into various or sorry did... or pulled out into config variables at the top of the Arduino code and I, I probably need to look at the Arduino code because I, I do done. think I'm a smart man but I have no clue what he's talking about so I probably should look at the Arduino code uh, before I embarrass myself do you have <laughs> you have one of these kits? Did you ever no, I don't have. That's the tic tac toe. I do not yeah. have that one. Remind me, I'm going to mail you one. Okay, and we'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, this is a good two hour kit. <laughs> so. It's got a lot of LEDs on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think uh, if if uh, Tom Full is still watching, that might be a nice one for uh, Linnea. She would she would like putting that together. And then she could play. You could play tic tac toe with her. It's his granddaughter who's who okay. is. Uh, has put together a few Alpen Glow kits and is now hooked on soldering. So, yeah. Well, Tom, I tell you, go to learn to solder dot com, <laughs> which which somebody here has. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and we sell soldering kits online. Uh, the idea, hopefully, is by the end of this quarter, we want to re inventory. We, we don't have a lot of inventory. Uh, by the end of this quarter, we want to re inventory the store. And then by the end of second quarter, we're going to think about bringing the subscription kits back yeah we're gonna see yeah. what that looks like yeah but um yeah cool. start with the coast and maybe maybe i can uh get a plane trip and just get a rental car and go do some west coast stuff probably take texas just seems like a really long drive through it just doesn't seem like a lot of fun to drive through texas that's my big hesitation <laughs> I, I've heard it's more of like the thing, a few of the states around Texas that seem really like that seem like they, it takes a while, but I've never, I've never done the drive. So I don't know, but I, I know on that strip, that, that strip is where people complain about it taking a long time, at least who, who have done that. It's like, Oh God, still driving. And it's, it's because it's very straight and very flat basically. I tell you, I did. I, do we? Are, is the stream over? Can we still hang out? No, no, okay. stream's not over. But let's let's end the stream because everybody has been super awesome about hanging out for so long. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, it's fun. Uh, next week we'll see what's what's happening. Um, I. I think I might actually be out of town next week, so I might not be on the stream next week. So there might not be a stream next week, or um, it we might have somebody else take it over. So we'll see. But you know, Twitter it'll it'll be on Twitter. So cool. All right. Well, we'll end it now. Thank you all for joining. And boop boop boop. Keep soldering. Keep putting stuff together. Boop boop.